Hello, welcome to lecture 12 of Elec Eng to CI5. In this lecture, I will go over some special cases of loop analysis. We'll address the case where you have a current source flowing in a branch uh, that is joined between two loops. This creates um, some difficulty in applying loop analysis, and we'll try to overcome that by defining something called super loop or super mesh. Uh, we'll also discuss the issue of using dependent sources, whether you have dependent voltage sources or dependent current sources. Okay, to motivate the discussion here on the current sources, um, let's take a look at this circuit. This circuit has two loops, uh, one loop here, a second loop here, and in this branch, which is joined between the two loops, there is a current source flowing. So we can, as the way we did in the previous lecture, we define a current for every loop, so this will be current I1, this will be current I2, and then let's try to find KVL applied to this one. So KVL will give you 20 minus 6 multiplying I1 minus 2 multiplying I1 minus I2, and then you have no way of telling what is the voltage drop across this current source. Okay, so you can't apply KVL around this loop or around this loop. What is going to happen, you have to create now a super loop, which is really the loop that you're going to form by bypassing the current source. So we're going to apply KVL around this bigger loop. This source still gives us useful piece of information. Why? Because you have here a current I1. The current I1 is flowing, is flowing downward this way. So this is I1 here, okay? And the I2 is flowing, uh, so this I1. I2 is flowing from, from bottom to top, okay, and this is 6 ampere, so we know that I2 minus I1 must be equal to 6 ampere, because the current flowing in this branch from bottom to top is I2 minus I1, but the current in this branch is equal to 6 ampere in the same direction, then 6 ampere must be equal to I2 minus I1. So what happened here? The current source gave us one extra equation relating the currents I1 and I2. I1 minus I, I2 minus I1 is equal to 6 ampere. But it eliminated two loop equations, and we have to apply only one extra loop equation around this super loop. This is a super loop. So we bypassed, we bypassed the current source. So the equation will be 20 minus 6 I1 minus 10 I2 minus 4 I2 is equal to 0. So this is one complete loop here. 20 minus 6 I1. Remember, I1 is flowing this way. Then the polarity you are going to be getting is plus minus. Okay. I2 is flowing this way. Then the polarity you are going to get around the 10 ohm is plus minus. The polarity you get around the 4, 4 ohm is plus minus. So if you go around in a complete circle, you get 20 minus 6 I1 minus 10 I2 minus 4 I2 is equal to 0. So this will be the equation that you're going to be using in solving these two currents. So we have one equation coming from the super loop and one equation coming from the current source. And then when you do that, you can solve two equations and two unknowns. So in general, every time you see a problem where there is a current source flowing in, the, in, the, in a branch that is joined between two loops, you have to apply a super loop. Okay, you have to apply KVL around the super loop, meaning you have to bypass this current source. Okay, let's take a look at this example. This example looks um, complicated, but actually you'll see that the current sources that we have, this one here, and this one here, and this one here, will play a key role in, in reducing the number of unknowns. Every time you have a current source, you are actually reducing the number of unknowns by one. Um, and I will show you this in a second. So in general, uh, that what's required in this question is to find I note this current here. In general, we have loop I1, you have I2, you have I3, you have I4, you have I5. We have five, five loops and we can potentially solve a system of equations which is five by five. But luckily, this is not going to be the case. And uh, we have now to, you can see that this, this current source here, um, 
create one equation relating this current and this current okay so the difference between these two will give b to ampere this current so current source here relate one equation relating this current and this current the difference will be equal to four milliampere and the current flowing in this branch in the clockwise direction is equal to minus six milliampere because this current this current here is six milliampere from bottom to top but the current we are assuming in this loop i i usually assume them in the clockwise direction will be flowing from from top to bottom so it's equal to minus six milliampere so this current source this current source this current source they will give us three equations that will reduce the number of unknowns to only really two we have here uh, not five unknowns but only two unknowns let's see okay so at first look we seem to have five loops as i said and we have five unknowns but we can tell from i i number the loops in this figure here this is i1 this i2 this i3 this i4 i1 is flowing this way i3 is flowing this way so this 2 milliampere is equal to i3 minus i1 it has to be very clear why it's i3 minus i1 because i3 is flowing from bottom to top while i1 is from to, from top to bottom okay and this the current this branch is their difference but it's pointing in the same direction as the i3 so this 2 milliampere is equal to i3 minus i1 so this is the first equation we can get now we cannot apply kvl around this loop because we have a current source you will not be able to tell what is the voltage difference around this current source and you cannot apply kvl here either but you can apply kvl to this super loop so let's go around this super loop here you have six volts minus one k multiplying i1 minus one k multiplying the current multiply uh, flowing here from top to bottom which is i3 minus i5 minus 12 is equal to zero okay so let me repeat this again i'm going in the clockwise direction every time i see a change from negative to positive i count as positive every time i see a change from positive to negative i count as negative so here i i1 is flowing in from bo from bottom to top so this is the polarity we're going to be getting and the i3 we assume is going to cause this polarity here so if you go around in a in a complete circle this is what you get six volts minus i1 minus i1 multiplied by 1k you continue this is zero here minus minus the drop here the drop here is equal to 1k multiplying i3 minus i5 remember once i assume this polarity it has to be the current in this 1k it's i3 minus i5 because i3 is flowing from positive to negative i5 is the opposite so 1k multiplying i3 minus i5 this one is minus 12 is equal to zero so this is this is the equation that we have here this is for super loop one this super loop here okay the super loop that I formed by bypassing the two milliampere current source. This super loop gives you one equation between I1, I3, and I5. Um, I, I can I can simply move all the currents to the other side to the, and divide by one k. If I do that, this becomes I1. If I divide this one by one k and move to the other side, this becomes I3. If I divide this one by one k, move to the other side, becomes minus I5. Here I have minus 12, I have plus 6 volts, so you get minus 6, 6 volts, you divide by 1k, it becomes minus 6 milliampere. But remember, I5 is known. I5 is the current flowing here, so in this branch, you are getting only I5, and it's flowing from top to bottom, then I5 is equal to minus 6 milliampere. It is negative, the value of this current is flowing in the opposite direction. So I can get rid of I5, put it equal to minus 6 milliampere. So this will, so minus 6 with minus will give us plus 6. It moved to the other side at another minus 6. So this is one equation relating I1 and I3. So here we have really a number of unknowns, uh, but I am eliminating them as I go. So I eliminated I5, I got rid of that. The way I did it now, I end up with two equations relating only I1 and I3. And the I, I2 and the I4 are not included. So I, so I can solve these two equations for I1 and I3 only. Okay? You can What you can do, you can simply sum them. You get 2I3 is equal to uh, minus 10 milliampere. So I3 is equal to minus 5 milliampere. 
you can substitute again here for I1, you get I1 minus 7 milliampere. So here, these two currents are actually flowing in the opposite direction because you have negative sign. They are flowing in the counterclockwise direction, okay? But it doesn't matter if you assume them still in the, in the clockwise, their values are going to be negative. So I solve for I1 and the I3. I'm going to repeat exactly the same steps for I2 and the I4. I can see I have this 4 milliampere current is flowing from top to bottom. So this 4 milliampere is equal to I2 minus I4. And then I will apply KVL around the super node. I cannot apply KVL around this one because I don't know what is the drawback across the current source. I cannot apply KVL here. I don't know what is the voltage drop across the current source, but I can apply KVL around the super node. Okay, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I will, I will I'll be able to obtain two equations, two more equations, two unknowns, I2 and I4, and then I will solve them for I2 and I4. Okay, so this branch here is 4 milliampere, so 4 milliampere is equal to I2 minus I4. Remember, I4 is flowing from this node to this node, while I2 flowing in the same direction as the current source. This is why 4 milliampere is equal to I2 minus I4. So this is my third equation. I'm going to apply KVL around this super loop here. This is super loop number two. So again, remember when the current flows in the resistor, it creates a drop in this form. So I2 is moving is moving upward like this so it creates a drop positive negative and here for the other resistance I will calculate I'll make the drop I assume it has this polarity here and when you do that the uh, the voltage drop across this one will be 1k multiplying I4 minus I5 remember the current flowing in this branch is I4 minus I5 because this branch this branch here is a joint branch between loop 4 and loop 5 okay so let's now apply KVL. So minus 2K multiplying I2 minus 6. Every time you see positive, negative, you count as negative. So 2 kilo, minus 2 kilo ohm multiplying I2 minus 6 plus 12 minus 1 kilo ohm multiplying I4 minus I5 is equal to 0. So this is the equation I have here for the second loop. I can collect all the coefficients of the currents and move them to the other side and then divide by 1k. So this minus 2k, I move it to the other side, becomes 2i2. This is minus 1k, become, move to the other side, becomes plus i4. This is a minus 1k multiplying minus i5, so it's i5. You move to the other side, it becomes minus i5. This is minus 6 plus 12. I divide it by 1k, then you obtain 6 milliampere. Okay? Now, but remember, i5 is not unknown. i5 is known. Because this current source is flowing only in this loop, its value is equal to minus I5, or I5 is equal to minus 6 milliampere. Okay, so the current sources are always useful, whether they are running in a branch related to only one loop, or to in a joint branch between a uh, joint branch between, uh, jo the, so, or in a branch that is joined between two loops. Okay, so. Let's get rid of I5 in this equation, replace it by minus 6 milliampere. This gives you plus 6. It moves to the other side, you get 0. So this equation tells you that I4 is equal to minus 2I2. So compare equation 3 and 5. This equation is between I2 and I4. This equation is between I2 and I4. I can simplify them. Get rid of I4, write it as minus 2I2. So you get 3I2 equal to 4 milliampere or I2 is equal to 4 over 3 milliampere. And of course, I4 is minus 2, I4 is minus 2 I2, so I4 is minus 8 over 3 milliampere. I'm looking for the current I node, the current I node flowing here in this branch. This current here is simply equal to I4 minus I5. Okay, so I know what's I4, it is this number. Subtract from it I5, which is minus 6 milliampere. So this will give you minus 8 over 3 milliampere plus 6 milliampere which is 18 over 3 then you get 10 over 3 milliampere so the last step as i said is simply to get the current i node which is the current flowing in this branch here from this node to this node pointing downward and because of the assumed directions of the currents this current here 
is I4 minus I5. I know I4 already calculated it. It's minus 8 over 3, and I have to observe the sign. I5 is minus 6 milliampere, so you put it here as plus 6. This is 18 over 3, get 10 over 3 milliampere. So, once you have done the solution, you have to double check your answer. In my opinion, if you have a minute, take it to check the answer. What I did here, I checked my answer by applying KVL around this big loop. This is, this is a big loop. It does not contain any current sources. I, I applied KVL around this one, and I verified that my answer is correct. Okay? So uh, I leave it for you to do this verification. Go around this loop. You know all this current. The current here is I1. The current here is I3 minus I5. The current here is I4 minus I5. The current here is I2. Calculate, calculate KVL around this loop and prove that the sum of all the voltage drops in the clockwise direction will give you zero. This one way to prove that this answer is indeed correct. So now we have all the currents we calculated and we, we know the voltages everywhere in the circuit as well. So one other thing that we need to consider when we have dependent sources, this is very similar to the nodal analysis case. If you have a dependent source, you have to write the controlling variable in terms of the loop currents that you have. And the dependent source are very useful. If you have a dependent current source, like a current control, the current source, or voltage control, the current source, you treat it as a, in the way you, in the same way you treat it an independent current source. But you have to re, re, replace the controlling variable and write it in terms of the um, loop currents, as I, as I mentioned here. And of course, you have to use super loops to bypass uh, dependent current sources. You have to use super loops because you don't know what is the voltage across them as well. So whether you have an independent current source or a dependent current source, and it is it is in a branch that is uh, common to two loops, then what you have to do, you have to find a super loop to write an equation. Where, uh, and the way you are doing it this way, you are bypassing this current source. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Uh, this example contains... This current source, this is a current control, the current source. So the current flowing here is equal to 4I1, and I1 is the current in the 4 ohm resistor. Okay, this is the current control, the current source. We have another current source, which is independent current source, 5 ampere. We have an independent voltage source, which is 12. We, uh, we mentioned, uh, in, uh, maybe I mentioned this before or not, but loop analysis is well suited for voltage sources. Okay, so voltage sources work very well for loop analysis. Current sources, you have to use the concept of a super loop. Okay? So what I'm going to be doing here in this example, I'm going to be defining current I1, current I2, and current I3. One, one word of warning. Someone else may say, I want to define I1 and the I2 and the I3. Okay? So he's defining the currents in a different way. This is fine. He's going to get different answer. But the current in every branch will be the same. In other words, if I take this one as I1 and I take this one as I2, the current flowing here is only I1. But if I take this one as I1 and this one as I2, then the current flowing here is I1 plus I2. Okay? So what I'm saying is this: these values that we solve for, we call them the loop currents, can have different values depending on the way you select the loops. But the total current flowing in every branch is going to be the same. The circuit will always have will always have the same solution. Okay, so let's start to solve this one here. And let's see how these current sources here and here are going to help us to simplify the circuit. Okay, so we have the circuit here. I call the current in the first loop I1 in the clockwise direction. The current in the second loop I2. The current in the third loop I3. Someone else may select it this way or this way. This is fine. Uh, because this 5 ampere is flowing from the top node to the bottom, to the, from the bottom node to the top node, this 5 ampere is equal to I2 minus I1. Okay? So I can write this equation immediately from this current source, that this 5 ampere, which is flowing from the bottom node to the top node, is equal to I2 minus I1. It is not I1 minus I2. It's I2 minus I1. So because I2 is flowing in the same direction as the current source. Now, we have to bypass this current source. We have to create a super node to find one more equation relating I1 and I2. And I3, of course. How do we do it? You have to go around this loop here and, and create a super 
I wrote it here as super node. This is a mistake, of course. I'm still uh, thinking of terms of nodal analysis. This is called super loop. Okay, so you have to be careful. It's a super loop or a super mesh. Okay, so I will go around this loop here. I will go in this direction. Okay, and let's apply KVL. So you have plus 12 minus 4 I1 minus this drop is equal to 0. This drop here is equal to 3 multiplying I2 minus I3. Remember, the current flowing in this branch is I2 minus I3. So if you write it as I2 minus I3, so the drop that's going to be happening will be plus minus. Okay? So this is the equation for KVL that we have. It's here I wrote it, okay? I moved the currents to the other side so I can simply write it as the value of the voltage source is equal to the sum of the drops. This is also one way of writing KVL. Both are equivalent. I3 is known. I3 is actually known. Why? Because I3 is the current in the third node, but I3 is equal to the value of this current, this current here. This current is for I1, for I, for I here. And what's I? I is I1. This current here, I is I1. So the current I3 is nothing but it's nothing, it's nothing but for I1. So I can get rid of I3 and write it as 4i1. So now what we have? We have 4i1 minus 12i1 will give us minus 8i1. We have 3i2. This is equal to 12. So we don't really have to worry about i3. Because i3 is equal to this current, which is 4i. But i, its controlling current, is equal to i1. So this current here is i1. So I3 is equal to I1. So I3 is known if you know I1. So I can eliminate I3 and only have two equations to unknowns. So I got already one equation between I1 and I2 from, the, from this current source. 5 is equal to I2 minus I1. I got one more equation by applying the, no, loop, uh, the, the, loop, anal the nodal anal loop analysis here, uh, KVL around this loop, uh, which is this one here. I can eliminate one of them. Maybe uh, I can eliminate I1 and our I2 and write it as I1 plus 5 and substitute here. So this is what I did, okay? So I got rid of this I2 and wrote as I1 plus 5. If you collect all the coefficients of I1, you get minus 5. You collect all the coefficients of I2, you get here uh, 8 and this 12. So uh, let's see here. Um, so I'm sorry, this is 15. This is 15. 3 by 5 is 15, 15, and this is 12, so you get minus 3. So the equation, this becomes minus 5, and this is minus, and this minus 3. So this is what we have here for I1. Okay, so this equation here, after it's simplified, you get this equation, minus 5, I1 is equal to minus I3, or, or minus 3. So I1 is equal to 3 over 5 ampere. If you know I1, then you know what's I2, because uh, I2 is equal to I1 plus 5, so you add, you add 25 over 5 to this one, which is 5. So you obtain 28 over 5 amperes. Okay, so now I solve for I1. I solve for I2. I know I, I can get any currents anywhere. Um, actually, they were asking, I think, for the current through the 3 ohm resistor. This is what was required. But the current through this 3 ohm resistor is simply equal to I2 minus I3. So it's I2 minus I3. But I3 is for I1, okay? So the current flowing here from top to bottom is equal to I2 minus 4 I1. Okay, so I did this here. This is I2. This is 4 I1, which is I3. So you obtain the current flowing in the 3 ohm resistor is 16 over 5 ampere. So this, these are the currents that we have. If you want to, I, I ask you to verify it using nodal analysis, but this circuit is very simple to solve in nodal analysis. Why? Because we have actually one node. This is one node here, and you have a ground node. So it's, it's, it's way simpler in node analysis than it is in loop analysis. Okay? So the equation that you have to solve, and I will leave it for you to do that, you will define this node here, call it V1. So this, this is this, this one here. So this is all one node here. And then you say the sum of all currents flowing of V1 is equal to zero. So this one here is V1 minus 12 over 4. We'll give you this current. This one here is V1 over 3. This one here is 4i. Okay, this is 4i. And this i we're talking about here 
is nothing but 12 minus V1 over 4. So I have to get rid of I and write it as 12 minus V1 over 4. Remember, I is flowing this way. Okay? And that's it. You, you have four branches. I usually sum the currents flowing out. So this current plus this current plus this current plus this current. This current here flowing out is minus 5 milliampere. Because this is 5, mil, five, amp, 5 ampere. This is 5 ampere flowing in. So it's minus 5 ampere flowing out. Okay. So I'm going to write nodal analysis one more time. I will leave, you to do it. I'll leave it for you to do it. But just write the equation. So V1 minus 12 over 4. This is the first term. Plus minus 5 plus V1 over 3, plus this current is equal to 0. You have to replace the controlling variable I. The controlling variable I here, flowing this way, is 12 minus V1 over 4. So you obtain only one equation in terms of V1. You solve for V1. I did that, and I got the same answers I got here. And I would like you to do this part as a check. We repeat this problem, which has only one node, using nodal analysis, and get these same currents that I got here. Okay, we have here one more example. Um, this is a, a current source. We have a current source here, but this is a voltage controlled current source. It's a current source, but it's controlled by the voltage Vx, which is a voltage around the around this branch here. Okay, we have this uh, independent current source. It's flowing from bottom to top, so it's flowing this direction, six milliampere. And would like to apply mesh analysis, would like to repeat the same problem, verify it using the analysis. I will do the verification for you this time, this more complicated. So what I'm going to be doing, I will, I, will, I will call this I1, I will call this I2, and I will call this I3. And then I will start to write the, the, uh, the low equations, KVL. The remember, this 6 milliampere will be equal to the current related to this loop, because the current flowing here is 6 milliampere. The current flowing in this loop is this current source here, which is Vx over 4,000. And Vx is this voltage, is, is, the, is, the, is the current flowing here, sorry, this current flowing here, multiplied by 4 kilo ohm. Okay? So anyway, so you start by writing three loop equations, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one, and see what you're going to be getting. Okay? I can't write KVL here because I have this source. But this, this source will eliminate for me one unknown because it's, it's going to give you one extra piece of information because of the, uh, because of the, uh, because I'm going to replace the independent variable, the, the, the controlling variable that I have here, which is Vx. I'm going to replace it by the current flowing here multiplying by 4k. Okay, let's see how we're going to do that in the next slide. Okay, so as I said, I define three currents, I1, I2, and I3. And then I will start to solve for these currents. I know already what's I2. I2 is, is the current flowing in this branch, 6 milliampere. So I2 is given. So this is done. Actually, I know also what's I1, because I1 is the current flowing in this branch. But I1 is Vx over 4,000. And what is Vx? Vx is the current flowing here, multiplying 4k. But the current flowing here is I2 minus I3. So I can simply say that Vx is equal to 4k multiplying I2 minus I3. I know already what's I2, it's 6 milliampere, okay? So I know that this is Vx. So I can, I can use this term here, this is Vx, and substitute here. So I obtain one equation relating I1, I2, and I3. I2, of course, is gone. We replace it by 6 milliampere. We'll have only I1 and I3. So, I, I wrote the controlling variable here is called Vx. But Vx is equal to 4k multiplying I2 minus I3. So, I'm going to use this one in my equation. So, I replaced Vx by 4k multiplying I2 minus I3. And remember, I2 is equal to 6 milliampere. So, I take this one and substitute here. 4k will cancel with 4k. So, this equation will give you that I1 is equal to 6 milliampere minus, minus I3. This is the first equation relating these two. Okay, we need one more equation. We know what's I2. We have one nice equation relating I1 and I3. I need one more equation. So I can go to this loop, which I did not use yet, and apply KVL. Okay, so uh, I can, I can, what I'm going to be doing here, I will take this as plus, minus. 
I will take this as plus minus and I will take this one as plus minus. Notice the way I use, I uh, actually I should, I will reverse one of them if you don't mind, just to make our life a little bit easier. Uh, the way I do it is that I take the drop to be positive in the direction of the current of that loop. Okay, so you can see I3 is flowing in the, in the clockwise direction. So this is plus minus, this plus minus, this plus minus. So the sum of all these drops will be zero. This drop here will be equal to 4K multiplying I3 minus I2 because of the assumed polarity. So this is 4K, I3 minus I2. The drop here is 2K multiplying I3 minus I1. The drop here is equal to 4K multiplying I3 is equal to 0. Okay? So um, I could do that here. This is, this is exactly the same equation I had. Okay? I, I simply moved the the, uh, the last the last one, so this is um, so this one here is um, 4k multiplying i3 minus i1. This is 2k multiplying i3 minus i1, and uh, the last one that I'm going to have here is this 4k multiplying i3. Uh, okay, it's flowing in this direction. Uh, of course, maybe you notice here that I uh, when I uh, use this, I uh, I actually when I solved it, I uh, I summed, I assumed the opposite polarity, but doesn't matter. I assume these two to be positive. I assume this one to be positive. I just want to make them like a battery facing two drops. Nothing has changed. Exactly the same thing. You get exactly the same answer. So this is another way of writing it. Another way of writing KVL to say that you have a voltage gain is equal to the sum of the two voltage drops. So if this is negative positive, this one will be positive negative, this one will be positive negative. So this is exactly equivalent to the KVL I, 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 I use with this polarity here, okay? So anyway, you obtain one equation between I1, I2, and I3. Get rid of I2, replace it by 6 milliampere. You have one equation more you can use to solve between I1 and I3 in addition to this one. So... This is the equation I got between I1 and I2 and I3. I got rid of I2. I replaced it by 6 milliampere. This is what we have here. This becomes here um, minus 24. I move it, becomes minus 24 milliampere. I solve the two equations I have, this equation and this equation. I can get rid of I1 and replace it by 6 milliampere minus I3. So I can put this one here, and this is what I did. Collect all the terms related to I3. I got I3 is equal to I1, equal to 3 milliampere. Okay? So this is 3 milliampere. This is 3 milliampere. This is 6 milliampere. Notice the surprise because this is 3 from here to here. This is 3 from here to here. The current in this 2 kilo, ohm, two kilo ohm is 0. There is no current flowing in this 2 kilo, two kilo ohm. Okay? And if you want to calculate the output, okay, I did verify, by the way, this answer. I applied, uh, I applied, uh, what was it, I applied KCL, um, you can apply a conservation of power to check that your answer is correct. I did some check that, that told me that my answer is correct. The way I required to calculate V-note, V-note is equal to 4 kilo ohm multiplying I3, but I3 is 3 milliampere, so you get 12 volts. Now, we repeat that same problem again using... Um, a nodal analysis so i have here three nodes the third node is not showing very well here okay actually it's showing um so i have v1 v2 and v3 he, he, this is a nice problem for nodal analysis why because i have only current sources so here this is minus six milliampere i would say the sum of the currents flowing out from here is zero so this is v1 minus v2 over 4k minus six milliampere plus vx over 4000 is equal to zero but Vx is V2. Vx here is V2. Remember, we took this node as ground, okay? So if you substitute for Vx to be equal to V2, and this is what I did here, okay? And you, uh, you, you arrange things, you, you will get a surprise. That this will give you minus V2 over 4K. This is plus V2 over 4K. They cancel with each other. You get V1 as 24 volts. So you got, we're able to obtain the solution of V1 immediately by applying KVL here, a KCL here, because what happened, all the terms containing V2 canceled out. This term, which has the, the, the V2 over 4K, canceled the minus V2 over 4K. Now let's go at node number two. Let's apply KCL here as well, 
Know that analysis. So V2 minus V1 over 4K plus V2 over 4K plus V2 minus V3 over 2K is equal to 0. Okay? Now get rid of V1 and the substitute is 24. Okay? I have already uh, V2 and V3 here, so I can, I can solve for them. So I obtain this equation here between V1, V2, and V3. I, when you get rid of, um, of the loop that we know, the voltage which is V1, 24. This will give you minus 6. You move it to the other side, becomes 6. Then you obtain this equation between V2 and V3. And then you come at this node, and then you apply KCL again. Then V3 minus V2 over 2K, this current flowing out, is equal to V3 over 4K, this current flowing out, minus this current, which is minus Vx over 4K. But remember, Vx is V2. That's why I write it this way. Minus V2 over 4K. Eliminate, uh, so let me see here. So you take the coefficients of V2 and V3. This is minus 1 half. This is after you multiply by 4K, by 1K. This becomes V2 over 4 minus V2 over 4. So this becomes minus 3 V2 over 4. So I multiplied both sides by 1K, and then I'm collecting the coefficients. This is 1 half. This is 1 over 4. You get 3 over 4 V3. So this is telling you something very interesting, that V2 and V3 will be equal. They must be equal. V2 is equal to V3. So you substitute here. You get half V2 is equal to 6, or V2 is equal to 12. And V3 is equal to 12 as well. So if V3 between here and here is equal to 12 volts, and between here and here is equal to 12 volts, then there is no current flowing the 2 kilo ohm. And this is exactly the same result that we got in loop analysis, okay? And you notice that here, V output is the same as V3, which is 12 volts. So we got the same answer exactly using nodal analysis. So whether you use nodal analysis, whether you use loop analysis, you should get exactly the same answer. But in some cases, as, as in this one here really, nodal analysis, in my opinion, is easier because you have only current sources.